Okay, let's dive in first and talk about tools of the trade. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually put a score together uh, when you're working with a film. But in all of them, what you have to do is sync what you're writing with the film, right? So there's a couple different ways that that can happen. Sometimes you'll get the film cut up into smaller pieces, um, and then it's a little bit easier to manage. Sometimes you'll get the entire film, um, and uh, that's tricky um, because then you've got this, you know, two-hour-long file that you have to keep track of, and you just put it into one big sequence. Sometimes, not always. Um, there are some ways around that. But um, what I want to talk about now is the specific software that we're using. So you can do this in pretty much any audio software. Um, I'm using Logic here. You know, you can also do it in Pro Tools. You can do it in Ableton. You can do it in kind of any software you want. They can all pretty much handle syncing to a film now. Now, you can also do it in a traditional notation editor like Finale, Sibelius. Um, I'm not sure if MuseScore can handle a film, but uh, it probably can. That would be for if you want to write like notes and keep in sync with the film. That's a way to test it. You can write a couple bars of music, play it back, see how it fits with the film. Most of the time, however, um, what professionals are doing is working in um, an audio program where they're just inputting MIDI notes or playing it in on a keyboard or something like that. Um, the you know the big big name film composers they might write by hand still some of it but then they have a team of people to input it into software if they're not using a real orchestra or um, putting into notation software if they are using a real orchestra so but you know most of the time I'm sorry to say we're putting stuff into software and then it's being played by a MIDI orchestra a fake orchestra. Most of the time, um, big budget films use real orchestras. Almost all TV shows use uh, synthetic orchestras, uh, and lower budget films use synthetic orchestras because orchestras are just really expensive. Um, so, uh, Logic is a pretty popular one to use. That's the software I have up here. Uh, Logic is good because it plays nice with Final Cut Pro, which is a video editor. You can swap files between the two. So I've had projects before where they required I used Logic. I've also had projects before where they didn't care, in which case I would use Ableton probably, Ableton Live, because that's otherwise my favorite program. But Logic is good too. So from that, I mean, you're just going to use a lot of software instruments, orchestras, pianos, Electronic stuff, if you want, depends on, you know, what you're, what you're writing. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this class talking about software tools and, um, you know, like the best sample libraries for orchestras and stuff. You can Google around and find that. Um, in this class, I really want to focus more on the techniques and less on, you know, my favorite orchestra sample library. But we will talk a little bit about the tools like we're doing right now. So uh, I just thought I'd let you see kind of how a session like this is laid out. This is a project I did a couple years ago. Um, this is a documentary about uh, transgendered folks. And it's a really interesting movie. What's interesting about this one is that because it's a documentary, and this is something we'll talk about later in the class, because it's a documentary, uh, there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of people talking. So when music is needed, it really kind of has to stay out of the way. That's a big thing about documentaries. You got to stay out of the way of the scene. There's very few scenes in a documentary that are just purely for emotional impact, right? Because people are almost always talking. Um, this scene has, this movie has one. It's this waterfall scene where it's just a shot of a waterfall. And it has like a kind of important statement it's the very very end of the movie it's the last scene before the credits so let me just walk you through quick what i did here and then we'll we'll listen to it and watch it i have if i go all the way back here i use this piano riff throughout a lot of the the film 
just a simple little chord progression. Oops, let me get to the beginning of it here. Okay, and that's it. So I use that piano riff over and over. You can see it actually where I use it. Use it here. I use it here, here, variations of it here. Here it is in the beginning, down there. Or not, I guess not the beginning. It's like not even close to the beginning. There it is again. There it is again. So I use it as like a motive throughout the whole um, film. And in the end here, what I'm doing is I'm taking it. We've heard this a bunch of times. And we're going to talk about motives in this class, definitely. It's one of our most important things. But I really like using motives like this. So I'm going to take this motive. I'm going to build on it, build on it, build on it. I'm going to add some orchestra to it. And then I'm just going to kind of go crazy with it and really build it up to, this, to the climax of this waterfall scene. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play it for you now. But what I want to do, I think, even though I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to mute the dialogue. And I would really like for you to hear this dialogue um, for two reasons. One, it's fascinating. Two, um, it gives you a better sense of the scene. However, there's some there's some bad words in it. Um, they use some adult language, so, and I don't want to have to flag this class as having adult language, so I'm going to mute it and hope that's okay. So when you see them talking, just get a sense of it. Um, so I'm just going to play it up to the waterfall scene, and you'll be able to see, let me, I'm going to move this up here. So you'll be able to see what's happening here. This is the piano riff, orchestra comes in, and then more orchestra, uh, another piano kind of thing but it, it gets kind of electronic and it builds to this big swoop at the end and this is the very end of the film so here we go And that is the credits. So um, that's kind of how it looks um, when something is all put together and nice. Uh, I mean, it's it's this huge, long thing. You'll see 
as we go through this class, you know, what I'm doing up here, how I'm marking those things, um, how I'm treating the dialogue. We'll look at this project and we'll look at a couple other projects of mine as well. Um, and uh, hopefully some that are not mine. I'm waiting to get, see if I'm gonna get permission to use those. Um, but that's it. So for tools, you can really use whatever you want. Most of the time we use a sequencer like this uh, where we just plug in the notes, not using traditional notation, but you definitely can do that. I think I'll, I'll be able to show you one where I did that, where it was all a choir. So I used traditional notes and I used Finale, the notation program to do that one.